All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome back to Dreadnought Woodshop. Uh, I know I've missed a couple of Wednesdays. There's been some unusual Wednesdays uh, of late. Um, plus, I've been having some computer issues. So I think I got all that worked out. Uh, I still might have a little bit of a delay uh, now that I got all the mechanics worked out. Maybe that'll be something that I work on uh, for next week or, you know, next Wednesday. Anyway, um, I'm going to be, today, I'm going to be making a baby rattle. Let me go grab one. Today I'm going to be making a baby rattle, like I said. Um, I had a friend that was uh, interested in having a handmade baby mount, rattle made for her. And so I went ahead and whipped this thing up. And I'm using rice uh, for the rattle. Now this one was the first attempt, and it had a little bit of a crack right there on the front of it. Uh, let's see if I can get that to show up. Had a little crack right there. Um, and I didn't realize it until, you know, I was too far along in the process. So I just decided to go ahead and complete it and see if maybe uh, I could work out um, I could work out the issues that I was having on uh, you know a practice piece. So anyway, I figured it all out. So uh, today I should be able to turn this with no problem for you guys. So anyway, the materials that we're going to use today, I got a block, I got a blank of maple here. Um, I'm figuring it's probably two by two ish um, square, and then this little piece right here is about one and a quarter square. Uh, this is going to be the handle. Um, now I did do some research, and apparently it suggested that a baby rattle is uh, has a diameter of about two inches uh, to keep from being a choke hazard. Um, I'm no expert, so I don't know, but uh, you know if uh, I would definitely, if you were making this for, you know, a friend or a family member or whatever, I would definitely look into that. So I'm not going to try to give any official opinions one way or the other. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this mounted on the lathe and we're going to start uh, turning this out. This is a good project because this actually has a little bit of, um, it's a little bit of spindle turning and a little bit of hollowing. So we get to do all those cool things. And I'm actually going to be using, where'd I put that thing? I'm actually going to be using some tools that I've never used before on the, well, at least not uh, on a live. These are some really cool, uh, small hollowing tools from Hunter Tools. Um, I made the handles, um, but this is the, uh, the little swan neck hollowing tool, and this is the straight one. And um, I'm going to try to show it on the other camera, but these use very small uh, cup cutters. And I really like them. Uh, they do take a little bit of getting used to. Um, cup cutters can be a little grabby. Um, they can be a little grabby if you don't present them right. So, you know, you just got to get used to it. But once you get used to it, they work really well. And these go into a very small opening, which is also super nice. So I'm going to go ahead and switch the cameras and get this thing mounted up so we can uh, get going with this thing. Okay. I spent most of my time, my prep time before the show today, um, making sure I had worked out all of my little issues. Um, making sure that I had worked out all my little issues with uh, the camera setup, so I didn't spend much time getting the prep work done, like marking centers on these blanks and things. So we'll just do that real quick right here on camera. So just using a little uh, quick center finding jig, center finding tool here to uh, mark out center. I had quite a few people ask about um, a video for these baby rattles, and I was going to—I was originally going to uh, 
um, originally I was going to do a regular video, but I thought, eh, why not just do a live on it? So here we are. So I'm going to mount this up using uh, 50 millimeter jaws. I'm going to use my uh, chuck spur uh, right, just so that when I'm done rounding the cylinder out and putting tenons on it, <clears throat> I'll already have the chuck loaded up. Hey, Harold and, and Brian, welcome to the show tonight. Let's see here. Let's get some. All right. One of the problems that I've had doing the lives that you probably uh, wouldn't be aware of is I didn't have anywhere to put my laptop. But I started working on a project a couple weeks ago uh, to get that worked out. And maybe once I get this done, um, I'll see if I can take one of these, change the direction of one of these cameras and show you. Because it actually worked out really, really well. So but anyway, let's get this thing between centers here. So the first sort of business, really, um, the only thing you really have to do at this point is just put a tenon on the end of it. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and round it out and put the tenon on it. Okay. Make sure you got clearance on the rest. Let's get my face shield. And my gouge. Okay. So you could de you could definitely just as easily use a uh, roughing gouge for this um, because it is a spindle turning, but I just prefer using a bowl gouge for roughing. Then you gotta speed up a little bit and make this thing round. Using the bowl gouge in that way can be, the first few passes are going to be pretty rough. Uh, but using a roughing gouge would be, those first few passes would be pretty rough anyway. But the difference is, when I'm finished, once I get it round, I get a much better cut. Even from my uh, roughing cut. good enough for what I need it to do right now. So the next thing I got to do is put a tenon on. I just need to put a tenon on this side so I can get it mounted in the chuck. Because we're going to do most of our work uh, from this other side over here.
So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that this is a little bit longer than what I really need. So um, I'm probably just going to go ahead and part it off so that I don't have so much material hanging out when I start uh, hanging out from the uh, chuck uh, when I get ready to start hollowing it out. So I'm going to go ahead and probably cut off a couple of inches right here uh, using the parting tool. I'm using this one as an example. That'll leave me with plenty of, probably about right there, leave me with plenty of room. When you're using the parting tool like this, it's always a good idea to make two passes and alternate so that you have a little bit of extra room so you're not overheating your tool. We got our blank, so let's get this out of here and get it mounted up. Put that in the scrap bin. So now, let's get this tailstock out of the way. And go to a little bit smaller bowl gouge. So now, what we need to do, going back to our example again, is we need to start we need to start to make the shape. Now, when we're making the shape, we want to make sure that we don't reduce the top port the top portion down too much because we want to have good support while we're hollowing this out so uh, we're gonna turn our turn basically the shape we want and then I'll start we're gonna start hollowing it out from the bottom now it's a baby rattle so there's not really any real uh, hard fast rules about what it could look what it should look like or anything like that you can really just kind of make whatever shape you really want. Um, one thing you definitely want to do though, is you want to make sure that you leave a, um, a nice uh, square face at the bottom. We're going to go back and trim this up, but you want to make sure that that uh, face is square. And you also want to make sure, where's my handle piece? You also want to make sure that it's smaller than your handle piece, um, which will make it a lot easier for you to blend these two together. Really, you can make, like I said, you can make the shape any kind of shape you want. You can make it a ball. You can make it round. You can make it oval. Uh, you know, babies aren't real discerning about this, about these things. So. Looking at this, mm. yeah, I kind of like it. So then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check and see how big, exactly how big this piece is. I'm going to measure that with a ruler. 
so I can get an idea for how big of a um, how big of a hole I can put in the bottom of this thing to hollow out, um, as well as um, what size I need to, you know, how much material to leave on the shoulder to make sure that this will seat properly against it. So it looks like we got about an inch and a quarter here. So I'm probably going to go with a three quarter inch hole on the end of this. Um, so I'll go ahead and drill that hole now. And uh, then I'll work this shoulder down a little bit more uh, and get it closer to the three quarters. And then I'll start hollowing it out. So we got our drill chuck here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up next to my rattle here, and I'm going to make a mark. Well, ordinarily I'd make a mark. You can see I have a mark here from the last one uh, that I made, but I would make a mark to denote how deep I'm going to drill this hole. So since I'm going to want to round this out anyway, I know that I'm going to be cutting uh, once I go to part this off and finalize the shape, I'll be cutting just a little bit south of that. So this is good. And it just so happens that when I bottom out the, uh, the top face of this drill chuck, I'll be just about at the right depth. So that works out pretty good. Actually, oops, let me do one more thing. So on the end of this, do you see that little nub there? That's going to make it real hard to get that uh, bit to register nicely. So we'll just cut that off real quick. Crank the speed down a bit. And then we'll go ahead and drill our hole. Okay. Whenever you're drilling a hole, a deep hole on the lathe, you want to make sure you take time and clean out the hole as you go. Some of the material, some woods will really pack up behind the bit. And you'll have a real hard time getting it, getting it out of there later. Plus, you'll be creating heat, which is an effect will dull the bit. Now this hole is going to serve two purposes for us. It's uh, our depth stop, as well as uh, the place where we're going to mount. The, also, the place where we're going to mount our uh, handle. Okay, pull this back. Okay, so I'm gonna switch cameras real quick so we can get a slightly better look at the end of this. Uh, so now we got our hole here and we got this shoulder. So I'm going to take this shoulder down just a little bit. Um, it doesn't really matter too much uh, that you get this exactly at an inch and a quarter um, because you're going to cut, as you cut those two pieces together, you're going to flow those out into a curve. So bearing that in mind, when you hollow this out, you definitely want to leave a little bit, of, leave this area in here a little bit thicker because you want to have enough material there to cut away. Um, you want to have enough material there to cut away some of uh, some of this, and in an effort to blend the two uh, parts together. So um, I'm pretty happy with the outside shape. So I'm gonna just let that ride for now. Uh, I'll 
uh, dress it up a little bit with some sandpaper in just a minute. But now we're going to start hollowing. So I'm going to start out with the uh, swan, the hook tool. Switch over here so I can talk about it a little bit. So these tools are from Hunter, like I said, and they have very, very small, um, have very small cup cutters on them. So you can see based on the size on <laughs> compared to my fingernail, it, it's really, really very small. Um, and like I said, these cup cutters, right? you have to present them at a little bit of an angle um, and then otherwise they can be a bit grabby if you put it in flat like you do with a traditional um, carbide tool it's going to grab a little bit so you're going to want to turn that down just a little bit uh, and, and tr introduce a little bit of an angle uh, when you're cutting with them so I get this set up here I'm going to set it up basically uh, on center and like I said I'm going to rotate it just a little bit while I'm cutting uh, the other thing is anytime you use one of these tools with a hook neck or a swan neck, uh, whatever that particular manufacturer may call it, you want to make sure that you keep uh, the area with the swan neck out over the rest. You don't want to turn like this because uh, leverage won't be on your side. You want to make sure that the straight, the straight portion of the shank is on the tool rest. Um, Harold asked what lathe speed I was using for uh, drilling the uh, ingrain. So I normally get down around uh, between 7 and 900 RPM. That seemed to work out pretty good. All right, so we're ready to start hollowing this thing out. And get our speed back up a little bit. I found that hollow for the hollowing, uh, going a little bit slower uh, doesn't hurt. So I'm going to go ahead and brace up, and in we go. me hollow stuff before you know I like to have air by my air right here by the lathe it's really handy for blowing all those chips out of there and it'll make uh, your hollowing job much easier so I've left a good amount of material right here on the shoulder uh, I'm probably gonna uh, thin that out just a little bit but basically what I'm trying to do is work this area right here underneath the uh, underneath the shoulder and then once I get some of that done, then I'll go ahead and switch to the straight tool and work uh, the middle down, work the bottom two thirds of this. A little bit of light. Switch this around. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna try to zoom, get the zoom right the first time. Nope. All right, so slide that over. So I'm going to go in here and follow this thing. tell you that I use uh, most of my hollowing tools are uh, some sort of carbide or insert type tool uh, I got to tell you that these are the most uh, these work faster um, in my experience with them they work faster than any of the other tools I've tried This 
see if that does a little better. Hopefully. Takes a little bit of hollowing. It's hard to check it, you know, because I got big old fat fingers trying to get in that little, <laughs> that little opening. Yeah, the cut, the cutter is contacting uh, right at center, and uh, I'm going in and I'm angling the cutter just a little bit. Uh, like I said, it's a little grabby if you go straight in like that. So you just angle it just a little bit. But other than that, it is cutting on center. So as you can see, angling it just a little bit. I would brace this more um, I would brace this against my body a little bit tighter um, but I'm trying to you know keep myself out of the out of the view of the camera here so maybe I'll switch to this way and I can get in a little closer Start working on. We'll start looking at you know uh, what exactly I've cleared out. Um, I find that a light really helps because you can get you can shine your light down in there, and you can get a pretty good idea uh, for what's going on. Sometimes you really just can't um, you can't get into certain areas real well with your finger, so you can't see. But if you shine a little light in there, uh, a lot of times that'll uh, really help out. So. Yeah, I can kind of see where I need to go now. finger stuck in there. <laughs> Alright, that's not a good idea. If you got fat fingers like me, drill a bigger hole. Uh, or risk getting your finger stuck in there. Alright, so. Sorry, I know that watching me hollow this out is not terribly exciting, but, you know, got to be done, I guess.
I think that got us pretty much there for the shoulder. Yeah, pretty much. So I just got to get rid of the material south of that. thinner you make these walls, <clears throat> the better your rattle is going to sound. And I think I got these pretty thin already. Let's see, I need a different measuring tool. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. We're down to hmm, a little more than an eighth of an inch. Looks like. Um, so <clears throat> we're pretty close to where we want to be. So I'm just gonna work on this uh, bottom, but the top. Well, bottom now, but top later. Um, work on rounding that bottom bit out just a little bit more, and then uh, we'll move on to the next set. time. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. <clears throat> you want to make this thin, but you also don't want to get too greedy because if you make the inside bigger than the outside, it won't work very well. You have a hard time holding rice. that out and then we're going to move on. Okay, we're good. So now, uh, I'm gonna go ahead. And <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the handle. So the first thing we need to do is we're gonna have to mount this in the chuck, and we're gonna have to get it down to um, three quarters. Now, um, I have a, uh, I have an extra chuck, so I'm gonna just use another one. 
But in the case that you don't have an extra chuck, then probably the better bet would be to start off by putting this on, mounting this between centers, mounting your handle between centers, and turning that three quarter inch tenon on the end of it first. And so then when you get to this point, you can just uh, go ahead and stick it, go ahead and attach the two together. So, actually, one more thing. Let me uh, go back and spend a little time getting this face flat. Go ahead and cut it and then use a ruler to check and see how flat you are. If you don't see any light between it, then you're doing pretty good. So that's pretty close. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off. And then we're going to get the handle mounted up. I think you can get, if I'm pretty sure that you can mount an inch and a quarter stock in standard 50 millimeter jaws, just barely. Yep. So what you do is put the corners between the jaws. Check and see how square my cut was. Not very. Uh, yeah, let me go and uh, I'm gonna go over to the bands on, cut this off square. Because I want it to mount in there and stick straight out where, because it's not quite square, it's sitting in kind of like cock-sided. So I'm going to go ahead and make that a square cut. Okay, so now that we got a nice square cut on the end of this, you can drop that in, bottom it out, and you can see, um, you can see right here where we're able to clamp down securely on this uh, inch and a quarter blank. So it's running a little more well, not quite true, but true enough. And then we're gonna go ahead and. <coughs> Then we go ahead and get a get a three quarter inch tenon on here. So I'll take the corners off. Then I'm going to use the beading and parting tool. You can just as easily use the parting tool for this. And uh, we're going to use some calipers. <clears throat> we'll use some calipers to measure. Okay, this on the back side there. So we're going to use our calipers to measure that opening right here. And then we're going to use that to get our tenon just right. So we're gonna start off by taking just a little bit, uh, cutting just a small tenon on the end of this. 
and cut just a small tenon and a little shallow one and get our depth right. So if we miss it, we can just cut it off and make sure that we still have plenty of material left over uh, for our project. Even though in this case, this blank is fairly long uh, compared to the compared to the size of the handle that we need. So there's actually plenty of material here. I'm thinking that's pretty loose, yep. So I'm gonna go back. Uh, like I said, I missed it. And so now it's just that little bit right there that I'm gonna end up wasting away. But I'm gonna leave it there for now because I know that that's too, I know that that is too far. Bring it down to not quite that that low, and then we'll check it with our actual workpiece. So that's pretty close. We need to take off just a little bit more. going to want a little bit longer tenon once we get the sizing right. So I'll go ahead and extend that just a little bit now. Take off just a little bit there. We don't need that. Almost. And I do want a pretty good fit there. Um, for one thing, I like, you know, when my fit parts fit together nicely, but uh, the other thing is I'm going to glue this and I'm going to immediately start turning the handle. So. Um, I want to make sure that I have as good a fit, as tight a fit as I can get. That'll still allow the glue. I think that will probably do it. Okay, perfect. So now we got this, now we have our tenon in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this out of the chuck and put our um, put the top part back and before I gotta do that I gotta put some rice in it. Now for the filling in our baby rattle, we're just going to use some uncooked rice. We're going to use some of this uncooked rice. Any rice will do. Um, now, when I made it the first time, I actually put too much. I actually put too much rice in there. And it didn't rattle as much. So a little bit goes a long way here, guys. So I just grab a little pinch there. Put my hand around it to kind of funnel it in. All right. Just a little bit more. It's not a real science here. Sounds good. So I'll go ahead and put this back on the lathe. Just want to be careful not to dump your rice out. It shouldn't, because you know it's hollow in the uh, it's hollowed around that corner, so you shouldn't have too much trouble keeping it in there. But just in case, and then we're going to need some CA glue that I left over there. Okay, we're going to need some CA glue. We're going to be using some. This bottle is marked flexible thin, but it's actually thick. I just ran out of the um, the right bottle for that. Okay. 
Let me move a couple of things. Okay. When you get ready to attach the handle, if you're going to do it the way I'm doing it with CA glue, you got to have everything in place before you get started. Because you're not going to have a whole lot of time uh, before the glue sets. Moved over here. Okay. So what I'm gonna use, let's see. All right. What I'm gonna use in the tailstock, right? Instead of something with a point, I'm gonna use this, and it has a nice flat on it, um, because the main thing I want to do is just apply pressure. I'll switch it out for something with a point later for support. So basically, I'm gonna put this in here. Let's see if the uh, other camera can see. So I'm going to put that in there. Then I'm going to bring the tailstock up for, uh, there we go. I'm going to bring the tailstock up and basically use that as a clamp. There we go. Okay, so I'm doing my test fit now to make sure that it will seat flat against the bottom of the uh so that it'll sit flat against the bottom of the the head of the rattle, which we're in good shape there. So now I can pull this apart, put some glue in there, and uh, there you go. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put some glue um, inside, just inside this uh, mortise. I don't want to get any glue inside, you know, and glue the rice, you know, glue too much of the rice down. So. I'm just going to apply it right here, not going crazy, just enough to hold this together. And then I'm even going to put just a hair, just a little bit around the shoulder here. Okay. And then I'm going to take some activator, take some activator, and uh, I'm going to spray the tenon portion with activator in an effort to get it to set quickly. Get my tailstock ready. Then I'm gonna put this thing together. Okay. Then I'm gonna use my tailstock for support. And I'm gonna look and make sure that I got a good tight seal all the way around. Alright, I'm gonna give that a few seconds uh, to set up. And I'm gonna hit it with a little bit more activator okay now we're going on time eh, not too bad all right so we got our two pieces married together see if there's any questions uh let's see what type of baby rattle are you making uh, melinda asked what type of baby rattle i'm making i'm making the uh, i have an example this type of baby rattle here Kind of like a maraca, I guess. Um, let's see. Um, and Harold asks, how thick is the wall going to be? So I shoot for about an eighth of an inch. I find that that um, should be plenty strong enough. And uh, it's thin enough to give a good rattle sound. All right, so now I think we're good. So I'm gonna take this. Uh, I'm gonna take this live center off, and I'm gonna use one with a point uh, for a little bit more support. I don't want it sliding around. I don't want it sliding around as I cut. So we're gonna go with something with a little bit more bite to hold it for cutting. Okay. All right. We can hear the rice in there, so we know that we didn't glue all the rice down. That's good. And now we get to just now the fun part. We get to go ahead and shape this thing out. So first order of business is to blend this corner to the uh, stem. Let me grab my little bowl gouge here. Okay. Actually. Reposition the rest a little bit. 
and get in a little tighter here. All right. So now I'm just going to blend these two together. So. Remember, I said you have to leave um, you have to leave this area a little thicker because, as you can see, I'm taking off a good amount um, in order to blend it down uh, to the handle. So um, I think we're in pretty, we should be in pretty good shape. I left quite a bit there at the uh, I left quite a bit there at the join. So as long as you don't see rice flying out, we did all right. So now, cut these two shapes down closer to each other. A little tap test, see if we're getting too thin. And then blend this together a little bit. Perhaps not exactly the shape I was going for, but again, babies aren't real uh, discerning about these things, so <clears throat> it's all good. Let's get in a little closer, so I can start working on the top, and then we'll get down and take care of the handle. So I hollowed it pretty much down to this point right here, down to the uh, down to the place where these two fast these two uh, beads meet. So I'm going to have to go a little bit north of that to make sure that I don't find the inside of this one. So I'll go ahead and clear up a little bit more room. And then I'm going to start down here. And then continue the curve up. Okay. And then move a little bit of that. Continue, continue, continue. Pick up that. Right there. Okay. Now to make some more room. Okay. And now I need to start rounding out the top of this. Uh, let's see. Watching the horizon line uh, to make sure that I'm getting something similar to the shape that I'm looking for. Okay. All right. So I'll let that go for now, and then I'm going to move on down to the handle. I usually go for something pretty simple for the handle. Um, you might be tempted to put a bunch of beads and coves in there. But that's just going to make it harder for mom or dad to keep this clean because there's going to be a lot of places for food and bacteria and dirt and grime uh, to hide. So I keep this, I'm going to keep this fairly simple. Go ahead and round it out. Obviously, I'm not going to use all this, but I'm just going to go ahead and uh, round it out anyway, just so I know how much material I got to work with. Okay. All right. 
So we're looking at the heads like that big, so I'll probably go with a handle hmm, about there. I feel like this is a little big for a baby rattle, so maybe this one's going to be a maraca for my wife's kindergarten class. We'll see. Okay. All right, so we're about there. So now I got to start working on um, taking off, working on um, parting this off. So I'm going to have to uh, work these transitions down to a much smaller size to make it easier to get it off, get it, you know, parted off the, t off the uh, lathe. And I want to leave as small a knit, uh, a little divot at the, at the ends as possible make it easy to sand off. That's a little better. And now, move down here. Just work on getting this parted down. Then we'll sand it, and we'll be pretty much done. Now I need to uh, switch to a tool that I can get in tighter with, so I'm going to go to my detail gouge. Got to pick up this cut from back here.
are getting down closer to where we need to be. Uh, we make a little bit more room and uh, we'll tighten that out. And then it looks like I need a little bit of work here too at the join. a little bit more room. And it'd be a little tricky getting in there. That right there ought to do. All right, so it's probably as thin as I should go there. So let's work on the other end. Do a little sanding and get it off. Of Switching back to the detail tool, detail gouge. The trick is to get it small but still strong enough to hold up for the sanding uh, that I'm going to do next. So now, we do a little bit of sanding on this. Probably start at 180. Let's see. Checking my stash and the tailstock down here. Yeah, that's too low. Let's see. What do we have here? All right, we got some 180 right here. Let's go ahead and start to, uh, actually, start with a little 220. Get our speed down. Actually, a little better. Yeah. Using the Robert Sword, the uh, inertia sander here. Go ahead and sand it. Um, actually, <coughs> see what we got here. Almost there. Since I'm running a little long, I go with the power sander.
né? back in just a little bit, touch up these little detail areas here. You don't apply too much pressure. Um, it's not held on there uh, with very much material, so I want to keep that in mind. So we'll go to 180 there and do a little bit of 220. And that'll finish her up. Okay. So now we need to part it off. Pick up the speed a little bit. And we're going to start to uh, make some of these final cuts here. You want to be real gentle with these. Because you're getting this down small enough um, where it could snap off at any time. So you want to make sure that you're not pushing too hard. You don't want it coming off. You don't want it severing before you're ready. Let's see if I can get this in there. Okay. We'll come in here. A little bit. Put that back just a little bit. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and part it off. And I'm going to part it off from the motor side um, so that it doesn't continue to spin once I separate it. So I'm going to hang on to it from here and get my tool ready. There we go. get a saw. I would twist this end off, but I don't want to risk tearing the grain, so I'm just going to take a saw here and uh, make a couple of quick passes, and off it comes. Let's see if it works. Sounds good. And what I'll do for this little divot here and this divot here is I'll go back to the power sander. Go back to the power sander and gently just sand that off. Okay, same thing on the top. All right, so there we go. Let me go ahead and uh, switch back to this other camera. So there you go. 
baby rattle and or maraca, depending on uh, what size you make it. So at this point, um, if I was gonna, if this was gonna be a baby rattle, I uh, put some um, mineral oil on it and probably like a beeswax comp beeswax mix uh, for a little bit of protection, and it'll be ready to go. You know, you know somebody with a little baby, uh, it makes a great gift. So it's not that hard, pretty easy. So anyway. So thanks for, uh, <laughs> let's see if, actually, let me check and see if there's any questions first. Baby Rattle Society. Uh, thanks, Harold. Okay. So I don't seem, I don't have a lot of questions in there, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap it up since I'm a little bit over an hour now. But uh, anyway, that's the uh, finished project there. Um, you know, I encourage you all to go out and try it. It's, um, it's pretty, it's a pretty, e well, it's a pretty easy project, um, and it's pretty handy. I mean, you know, making a handmade uh, rattle for your favorite newborn. So anyway, uh, thank you guys for joining me in the shop. Uh, I know that I haven't had a Wednesday live. It's been a little sporadic the last couple of weeks, but let's face it, we had a couple of, of uh, historic Wednesdays of late. Uh, so I'm hoping that things will be more consistent going forward and I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Um, I'm going to try to put, I'm going to try to, uh, make an announcement a little bit earlier, a little bit further out, maybe Sunday, um, about what the next topic is going to be. So, um, I'm ending this one at an hour and 12 minutes. Uh, thank you for joining me and, uh, remember to get out in your shops, uh, make a mess, have some fun, dreadnought and make something.